Jay Friedman coming? Yeah. Okay, let's we'll, we're going to wait just a couple minutes. Um, it's always better if we the more people we have, the better it is because everybody that doesn't vote sort of counts as a no. So we have to do the phone call thing. We're all here now. There's rain around. Hello to the south. Hi, Alex. It's Nathan. You're on speaker phone. Hi, Nathan. And everybody else. We're, we're about ready to start. Sounds good. Hello, okay. everybody. Um, so I think we should do the village board first so nobody has to hang around while we go through the formalities with the fence board. So let's call to order and have a roll call for the village board meeting, please. So for the zoning board meeting, um, member Carlson? Member Elsa, sir. Here. Member Friedman. Present. Member Kaplan. Present. Member Novak. Member Satter. Here. And Chairman Rowan. Here. We have a quorum. That's great. For the, the first item of business is the June 4 Zoning Board of Appeal meeting minutes, um, which have been circulated. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or do you want to make a motion to approve the June 4 minutes, which looked okay to me? Is there a second? second. All in favor? That carries. Okay. The next item is a public hearing to consider a request of James, I, if I get this wrong, Cock, uh, for uh, variations to reduce the rear yard setback and side yard setback for construction of a screen porch addition at 1165 Hofelder Road. Um, should we swear everybody in all yes. at once? Yes. So uh, anybody who wants to speak on any of the three scheduled items, um, uh, Nathan's going to ask you to raise your hand and then say that you're going to testify truthfully. If you're going to speak, please raise your right hand. <coughs> Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will be providing in, in these matters will be true and complete? Thank you. Okay. Um, whoever wants to speak in favor of this um, variance for the porch, uh, come on up, tell us who you are, and then uh, tell us why we should grant this. And if I got your name wrong, I apologize. Uh, my name is Jim Cash. Um, I live okay. at 1165 Hoffelder. Um, I'm requesting the uh, variance uh, both from the side and from the um, back of my property. Uh, I currently have a deck, and I'm sorry, a, um, a uh, patio that is about a third larger than what I'm requesting, which was there when I bought the house. Uh, and uh, my, uh, my plan was to remove the patio and make a smaller screened-in porch. Um, I'm here because the house was built, those, the variances were not in existence, and I was unable to, you know, so I'm here to ask you to possibly give me uh, a variance. Um, I, I don't know if you want me to read these points or we've read them okay um, and if you've been following us we're kind of a soft touch <laughs> um, and I will say I have a, a bigger yard but I had a porch and um, I had the same problem you you do which okay. is it's impossible with the Sun and all that everybody knows the secret to living around here is a screened-in porch and so 
but uh, tell us, I, I don't want you to prolong this. We've all read this. Um, uh, anybody have any questions? I understand the answer to that is no, Nathan. I didn't receive any written or verbal objections, but I did receive a, a calls from a neighbor to the rear with questions. And tell us, tell us just a little bit about that. Just, just, so just trying to understand the uh, the scope of of what was being requested. And, and after you told them, they didn't give me an opinion. Okay. I. I I think they might be here this evening, though. No. Okay. Yes. Hello. Okay. Um, well, um, before you, before we vote, we want to hear from the neighbors. So tell us who you are and what, uh, and if you have an issue with this, tell us what it is, and then we'll give Mr. Cash a chance to respond if he needs to. Oak Ridge Drive. Our backyard is directly in back of 1165 Hofelder Road. Uh, would the board please note that these are small backyards and the addition asked for in granting of a variance would decrease the privacy so valued in suburban living. We, we have enjoyed living here for 20 years and have been happy to avoid the congestion and crowdedness of city living. We hope another solution can be found by our neighbors. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, can I ask? Can I ask you a question? Because they, um, yes. I, you absolutely are enti entitled to make the point, and your your point is your uh, comment is is exactly on point in terms of what's at issue. Uh, but I have a question about the privacy because they already had a port, uh, a, a deck, a patio, which was larger. It's a, it's a small concrete patio. Right. And um, we are, there's another point I didn't make. In the, um, we are in a tri-level house, so we have a deck that is higher, too, than their backyard, which would be, um, I think, a little uncomfortable build a permanent structure here, um, could, if it could be avoided, I would appreciate, we would appreciate it. Perhaps there is another solution like these rollback awnings or these um, type of gazebo type things that not quite so in your face. Okay. Okay. Mr. Cash? Fish, and um, I understand his reservation. Um, currently, between our houses, there is vegetation, and he is correct that he is higher than we are. And um, they're talking about privacy, and technically speaking, they can see right into our house right now. Um, our patio door is at the end of the patio, which is the whole of the patio, which is about 14 or 16 feet. So technically, we're the ones that are not being, have the privacy. But during the summer, there's plenty of growth between the porch, I mean, between the two houses. Um, the, I did consider the, the, the things that you said. Uh, and I've considered awnings not only for this house, but for my prior house. And one of the problems with awnings are if, is the wind. The wind, um, especially if it's wind you can draw back and forth, you have to remember to do that all the time. 
and um, it really doesn't protect um, you from the sun only temporarily, well, part of the day, so it would cut it down somewhat. But um, as far as privacy, it doesn't change anything. Um, I just felt that the awning, I mean, after investigating it for my old house, it just didn't work because you had to bring it in and out. It's like doing a, like an umbrella. We also considered a, an umbrella um, for that, but it really does, an umbrella only will, you can tilt it, you can do all kinds of things, but it really doesn't cover much of the patio. It's, it has limitations. And the umbrella that you would be able to use if you wanted <coughs> really something is one where it's offset, and then you have always the problem again with wind issues, especially if you leave it on. Um, but I do respect your opinion. No, it is, what, two seasons, two and a half, just screens. It, it can't, no, there's no heat in it. Um, there's no plants. Put in heat. I, I, uh, I talked to uh, Mr. Parsh, and when we talked about it, I presented all kinds of different ideas. All of them required a build, you know, a, 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 a variance. Um, had I wanted an all year round room, I understand it's a whole new set of requirements. Where, is that correct? Um, not zoning requirements. I'm no, not but sure. I meant building requirements. Yeah, it, that, that could be. Yeah. So we're talking about um, a rear yard setback, which is 30 feet, and you want the maximum, which makes it 24. Without that, I think I wrote in there, I would have three and a half feet. Great. No, oh, I. Um, <laughs> but it isn't, you know, I, yeah, I, we, I don't yeah. have to repeat what you already said. Okay. Uh, anybody have questions about this? I, I, let me just say um, the philosophy that I've tried to apply um, uh, to them, uh, it's within the ordinance and the are fine with it, then we're probably going to be fine with it. It's much harder to make um, an objection as this one is, which is sort of exactly on point. No, I, I understand. Uh, having said that, I don't actually think it's a privacy thing because, um, you know, you can actually be closer to them on your current patio than you will be on this screened in porch. But it's a structure, and you know, as neighbors, there, um, they have a point. Um, you also have a point. Um, so, uh, and I'm, and I'm actually thinking about it because I, I've, I've had this theory about people objecting, and they almost never object. And sometimes when they object, we can tell it's, you know, as a result of some. Hatfield and McCoy feud, and we can discount that. But that's no, not the case here. I, I, I get this. This is this is probably in a straight zone. This is the single hardest thing I've had since I've been on the zoning. But some of them are other issues. But just in terms, of totally legitimate point of view. I mean, you're entitled to ask for a variance. It's within the variance, and you're entitled to object because you don't want this big thing next to your house. And so, what do you folks think? sizes, the, um, the statute provides for a certain setback, and the setback uh, is 30 feet, but there's a 20% variance allowed, and that's, uh, and, you know, typically, we're comfortable that the, that the zoning ordinance and the variance, that even if somebody gets the maximum variance, that that's okay. That's typically what we think. Uh, but that's subject to neighbors objecting in good faith, as you have. I, I, if you don't mind, I can note two things just purely for information based on um, just in the spirit of 
learning and keeping you informed. Uh, there is a provision in the zoning code that does allow for a, a canvas or similar readily movable awning to encroach into a setback, but it does limit the encroachment to 72 inches, which is six feet. So it could only come out six feet from an exterior wall, no more. Um, and then... Is this, is this like the Stan Schumann exception? I don't know. There, there's a section of the zoning code in the residential district that lists um, some items that are permitted encroachments and required yards. He and one such item is, is that. It, it doesn't come up often, but... He had a temporary uh, carport that he set up for the mm -hmm. winter. Mm. And he had to get very special dispensation, and I think they tried to accommodate that. The other item is, I, I heard something about an option of a gazebo being mentioned. A gazebo is considered an accessory structure, which means it, it could not be attached to the house. Um, okay. An accessory structure uh, can actually be up to five feet off of a rear side yard setback. And I have seen people who have proposed or have built screened gazebos. Um, okay. So are you saying that if the applicant wanted to build a screen porch five feet off the property line, then you still see the ordinance? Or you can possibly get a permit for that? Is that fair? As long as it met the five foot uh, distance from the rear property line and the side yard setback yes it would be but but obviously there there would be a, a walk to get to it from the house oh he's what he's saying is that he's saying that Village allows for rear yards a six foot fence. Don't have to get a variance for that. It also protects grandchildren. <laughs> right. In, gen <coughs> in general, the village is sort of negative on fences. Um, this is a four foot fence but, I added. But, but, you know, look, whatever is backyard. You know, I like my neighbor, I like yeah. talking to him. Oh, yeah, I yeah, like yeah. talking to them too when we get a chance. Um, let me, st uh, since no one is, I, this is really hard because I have this theory, and this case makes my theory difficult because everybody's got an important and legitimate point of view. I think uh, I'm inclined to agree with this because I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of weighing these two legitimate interests. I think um, you'll find it isn't so bad. You, you can't really see the difference between 30 feet and 24 feet. Uh, I, that does not denigrate at all your point of view, which is totally legitimate, and I guess I could be wrong, but I think, in fact, it's not going to infringe on your life. And I think it's more This one isn't easy. I'm inclined to be for it. Um, uh, in, you know, in part because I think it's not going to affect, I don't think it's privacy is not going to be a problem. It's, they're going to be further away from your house than the patio that they're now allowed to 
have. They might be in the um, porch more often because the patio is kind of unusable in the evenings because of bugs, and it's unusable when you're in sometime in the afternoon because there's too much sun. Um, but I'm inclined, I'm inclined to be for it and, uh, with reluctance because uh, of the uh, well taken, well presented, and, and totally appropriate objection you've made. Anybody else uh, have a different view on this? Or? Uh, you want to say anything? I mean, I, th I think we've heard your point. Go ahead. I'm not familiar of, of similar cases in the immediate vicinity. Well, there's, no. you know. Yeah, across the street and further north. It was in the 1200 block. No, it, uh, no, it, 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 uh, it didn't have a, a rectangular backyard. The backyard was, was angled. We've, you know, just so you know, we've granted plenty of variances for stuff going into the backyard. Um, it's easier to do those because the distances are, you know, pretty great back there. Um, um, but we, yeah, we've, we've done things like this. And I remember, it's not there anymore, but back in the 90s, there was a, it, I, there was a huge uh, extension uh, sort of deck that was built out um, and there's no question the neighbors who were on um, you know, the other side could see it so it was on it was on the w it was west it was instead of going uh, east but it was west and um, we, we do grant these um, in general I, you know, it's always easier when everybody comes in and leaves happy, and I, I regret where this is going for you, but I, um, I, we believe, I think, that you're going to actually be okay with this, that it's not going to affect uh, your life. My parents lived in Winnetka, and their, uh, their next-door neighbor wanted to build a big house and needed a variance, and I remember my dad sort of grumbling about it, because, again, it was really big, I mean, it's a big house. And after they moved in, it was like, okay. They were okay. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Have a roll call. Uh, Carlson. Yes. Elsa, sir. Yes. Friedman. Yes. Kaplan. Yes. Satter. Yes. And Chairman Rowan. Aye. Motion approved. Good luck with your project. And um, again, I'm. I'm I'm sorry uh, you didn't get what you want this time, but we appreciate the time you spent coming in and the good faith with which you presented everything. And I hope you like it. I, well, <laughs> I, you know what? I hope you will tell me if, if we turn out to be wrong. I, but I'll, I would like to tell us one way or the other because it will help us do our job. And if it turns out we're wrong, uh, you have our apology.
The second item tonight is a public hearing to consider a request of Calvin Bernstein on behalf of property owner Chicago Title Land Trust Company, and I'm not reading the number, but you can see it, for variations to reduce the rear yard setback and to increase the maximum gross floor area ratio for construction of additions to the home and detached garage at 655 Sheridan Road. So whoever's making this presentation. Okay. While they're looking, I can start. Okay. Uh, my name is Calvin Bernstein. I'm the attorney for the, the owner of the property. And uh, we appreciate uh, you hearing this case tonight. Uh, I don't know if you went by the house, but um, this house is located just right near downtown Glencoe. Uh, it's about 90 years old, and it's, um, I did a little research into the architects, who actually are very renowned architects um, in the area. Uh, this house was actually their first commission. So this is the first thing that they ever built in the Chicago area. Then they went on to build Temple Sholem, which is downtown on Lakeshore Drive. They, um, they, built, they, they were the architects on uh, Old Orchard, on um, Oak Brook Center, uh, the Pick Stager Concert Hall down at Northwestern University, Two Prudential Plaza, the Daly Center, um, what else did I find out there? Um, oh, the Solel Congregation in Highland Park, just to the north of us. So these architects went on to become uh, very renowned in the area, and, and the owner of the property uh, who discovered this house, and, and their first house, actually their first commission, the first thing they built was this house, and he fell in love with it, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to update it to uh, 21st century living. The house, I said, is 90 years old, um, it's a corner lot. Um, based on the zoning code, uh, the, the, the code has the front yard um, uh, abutting Hazel, which is directly to the south. However, however, if you went by the house, the actual created some of the situations we're here tonight because some of the, the area that they want to work in, which is to the north side of the house, is considered the rear yard, even though it functions as a side yard. So I'm going to call the architect up. She's going to explain if. Uh, uh, what she wants to do, how she came up with the ideas to, in order to update this home, and then we're available for any questions you may have. I, has anyone talked to much about um, architecture? Has anybody uh, had the um, Historic Preservation Commission uh, weigh in on this? I mean, they, they, they don't, you know, there's no review or anything like that, but part of your pitch was that this uh, is going to house uh, as a historic structure we, we, we when we submitted we noted the, the architect and we noticed the, we noted in our letter that it was All the right. first commission so okay. objected to this one no I didn't receive any uh, verbal or written objections nor any questions okay so um, you have the drawings I believe if you look the floor plan and maybe you, you can go to the PDF there's a PDF file in this folder to the drawings if you could go to the second page so this is the existing first floor we have a two car garage on the north side of the house and to the north of it is the rear yard. We would like to put a mudroom addition and a detached three-car garage behind. Um, and um, His existing behind it. If Nathan could go to to the pictures, he could show how it looks uh, from the back. Uh, next, and one more, I believe. Yeah. So on your right side, this is the existing two-car garage, and a bedroom above the Sheridan Road is where my pointer is going. So our addition will be behind completely 
covered from the street. So we are trying to preserve the existing look as much as we can. Um, also, maybe it will show the site plan. It was the first page on the PDF. So the detached, the free car detached garage will be existing structure completely, uh, not the, the one before. Yeah. Uh, here, it will be completely hidden from the street. And what we are trying to do is match the existing design of the current roof. Um, on this garage, I think one of the pictures was oh, this way. Yeah, here's the view of the detached garage with, with the existing mansard roof above the current two car garage. We are trying to repeat the same design on the new detached garage. What's driving this request is the fact to try to match up the roof line with the garage with the existing house because there's a lot of unusable space that's up there that's counting towards FAR, and that's driving the FAR of the entire project. So in, in, in addition to the area above the garage, which is not going to be usable, but it counts towards FAR, FAR as, Nate, as Nathan pointed out in the packet and his, in his staff report, is that there's area inside the house in the, in the attic that's also counted towards FAR. Again, not usable space, but it goes with the 90-year-old design of the house. So if in order to keep the house, um, in order to update the house, but, but, uh, but to keep the house uh, it, consistent with the, the vision of the architects, um, this was what Natalia came up with. And those are really the, the two things driving the house is, is the orientation, the driving the variance, I should say, is the orientation towards Sheridan Road that this is considered a rear yard and the fact that you have all this unusable space that's quote unquote attic that's counting towards the FAR. Yes. Yes. Yes, it's detached to the. To the, 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 the addition is attached. We can, we can see it on the floor plan. Uh, but the garage is detached. Okay. The new free car garage is detached. Okay. Is there more of an addition on the first floor on the other side of the house? Uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. we, yeah, there is an addition in the back on the southeast part of the house. Okay. We're making the living room deeper. Right now, this living room is 17 feet, extremely long. We, we're making it deeper. Okay, we should try to make that room more usable. A big part of the problem here is that you have a corner and so you have a side yard which is treated as a front yard so you have to meet the 50 foot front yard setback. I will note that on Hazel, I drove by it tonight, and there's a wall on Hazel. So you, you can't really barely see the house when you're driving down Hazel, and that's, that's operating as a side yard. Okay. Um, do you have an illustration of where the setback is? Uh, yes, actually, on this one. Again, the existing garage is already closed. It's already not conforming. So the, the, where the garage is now, that's the same corner as in the back? It's to the right. Okay. That's his. And there's new construction uh, directly to the north. It's, on, it's under construction right now. The 
wall is on the lot line goes all the way to the south of the property along Hazel. And that really encloses that area that makes it, it makes the front yard look like a rear yard because that's where the, that's how the house was oriented. Thank you. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Have a roll call. Carlson? Yes. Elsiker? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Kaplan? Yes. Satter? Yes. Rome? Hi. Uh, good luck with your project. Um, and we appreciate that you're willing to go the extra mile to have your addition look like the initial house. The next planned item is a public hearing to consider a request of Raven Passavento to reduce the front yard setback for construction of a master bedroom addition at 636 Washington Place. Um, tell us who you are and uh, why you think we should do this. My name is Chuck Reister from Brendan Reister Architects, 20 North Yaka Drive, Chicago, Illinois. And Leah Marsh is here, the owners. Chris Rudolph, the associate architect, and Christopher Rudolph Architects, Chicago. Uh, the proposed uh, 847 square foot addition is situated at the north -est, northwest end of the property that is located at 636 Washington Place in Glencoe, Illinois. The residence is not conforming corner lot with the front of the house facing the corner side yard. The front yard setbacks are applied to both the north and the south lot frontages. The bulk of the existing residence is situated towards the south of the property. The proposed new addition will provide a pleasing streetscape along Washington Avenue and further enhance the first rate status of Glencoe. The existing building is one story U shaped and planned, creating a west facing courtyard. The building has a concrete base and masonry facades. The basement, the house has a basement and crawl space. This will extend underneath the new addition. The new addition is low sloped roofs that will match the existing roof heights and slopes. All sides of the attractive addition are architecturally detailed and aesthetically pleasing and match the existing house. Extending and lining the new proposed addition with the existing wall extends into the front yard setback by three feet and approximately 20 feet long. It will not extend across the whole 50 foot setback, but just a portion of it. We think that extending it, aligning it with the existing wall is the appropriate thing to do. Um, we could have added on for the master bedroom. We didn't think a two story addition would be appropriate trying to um, make sure the addition uh, is seamlessly added on to the existing structure. Can you explain again what you mean by the courtyard? It's a U-shaped house. Okay. And it faces, the, the courtyard faces to the, the west. So we're actually adding on to the courtyard just a little bit. And uh, they just, you know, want an updated lifestyle with the master bedroom suite. Formally was. It was, yeah. It, uh, within the last year or two years, it was uh, went through a process to be dedicated, as, and it, that included a, an upgrade to the street, the dedication of right of way, and um, the whole nine yards. It's a new piece of property.
案子。I think the probably the second 11 by 17 attachment is the most helpful in understanding what they're requesting. It's the site plan, and you can see that there's just sort of a, a narrow triangular area that is going to be encroaching beyond. That's the extent of their request. Nobody's complained. I don't think we're living there with who will like it better. Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve. Is there a second? Okay. Let's have a roll call. All right. Uh, Carlson? Yes. Elsa, sir? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Kaplan? Yes. Satter? Yes. And Chairman Rowan? Aye. Motion uh, approved. Uh, good luck with the project. Thank you. Thank you so Good much. luck with your project. <laughs> Are you new to Glencoe? Welcome to Glencoe. Um, I'm looking. No, you you guys are you've done great. You're done. Uh, you're welcome to stay. This is public comment time, but I've determined that there won't be anybody in the public to comment. Anybody want to say anything that's not part of our regular minutes or regular meeting? Okay. Oh, well. Well, congratulations. Must have been a pretty high powered class. Um, um, so I think there's no public comment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Anyone? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can't Aye. leave yet. Can't leave yet. Uh, we have a, let's call the, call to order the fence board meeting. And we'll have to have a roll call. Member Carlson. Here. Member Elsesser. Friedman. Here. Member Kaplan. Here. Member Satter. Here. And Chairman Rowan. The agenda is the June 4, 2018 Fence Board of Appeals meeting minutes. Um, anybody have any comments or is there a motion to approve them? Is there a second? Uh, thank you. Um, nobody's here to comment. Is there a motion to adjourn? I haven't, I've talked to Larry about it, but I haven't done it. I've been okay. trying, in part because I haven't figured out exactly how I want it done. And I'll, I'll raise this, and you know, I just, I should do it, maybe dump it in their lap, they can figure it out. Um, so in general, we want to be able, I think, because it helps us, you know, 98% of the time, but unfortunately not with the one thing we had today, which is too bad, but it is approved variances that are within what's allowed uh, because we're sort of confident in the zoning code with the variance. On the other hand, I feel very differently about fences. I don't think fences are an emergency. I don't think anybody's life really is affected by fences. So um, if we put in a maximum fence, I don't want to have it the same rule, uh, you know, a, a maximum variance allowed. 10%, you know, one foot, whatever we say, I don't want the same presumption. I want a different presumption, and, and I regret that I've not figured out. Um, uh, it, I've talked to Larry about it, um, and maybe what we should, maybe I should just write something and let them worry about it. Um, I don't want to interfere with the program we have for regular requests. But I think we have a pretty good thing going. Same time. I hate the damn fences. 
Can we, we did, have we voted on the? We, we need. Do we need to have like a voice vote? For well, you approve the adjourn. minutes, so for yeah. adjourn. Yeah. No, nope, just a motion to adjourn. Is there a motion yeah. to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank. Aye. Thank you, everyone, for coming on uh, a lovely summer. The next meeting evening. is, and we will have a meeting in September. Just so you know, it's September tenth. The, the, the s- Monday after the Yes, correct. Uh, I may not be here. I think. Uh,